I'm CK. Today we've got another one brought to us by WADA. This is the Mad Lab Electronic Kit 123. I'm not actually sure what it does, but we'll put it together, see what we can learn from it, see what it actually does, and I hope you enjoy the video. Here's the box, Mad Lab Electronic Kit from WADA. Mad Lab Electronic Kits, learn how to solder. It's got LEDs, soldering iron. It's a level one, so really simple. Easy to play, not easy to win. Nine volt battery not included, and it's a soldering kit. And we've got some resistors, circuit board, some feet. Looks like some uh, trimmer, but I'm not sure about that right now. Some diodes, I don't know what that is. Battery connector, some wire, some LEDs, an electrolytic cap. So let's see what's inside this. I think I know what this might be, but again, I could be completely wrong. Nothing left in the box, so we'll get it ready for recycling. Open up the piece of paper first. And drive back off. I'm going to back off a little bit. There we go. Uh, solder side, component side, resistors, spindle. Watch the polarity. Okay, I'm and it's got a stylus, and I'm still not sure what it does. But we'll figure that out. And of course it doesn't say anything on the back of what it, what it does. Let's make things. I'm keeping your electronics safe. Well, thank you, little plastic bag, for keeping my electronics safe. Nobody else is going to do it, so you may as well. Okay. Nothing else in the bag. We've got two transistors, battery in, stylus, some diodes, some resistors, one electrolytic cap, four LEDs, and this says start, and you go all the way around, and then finish and I don't know what it's supposed to do, but that's okay. We'll put it together and see what it does. Big ol' orange LEDs, three of those for that step. Maybe it's mistakes, I don't know. And a red LED for finish. Some rubber feet, and this is the probe. We're gonna have to solder some wire to that. This orange wire right here. I guess we're going to put these in here. Maybe, maybe you try and put the probe in without contacting this conductive surface. Maybe these LEDs light up and you get three mistakes and if you exceed three mistakes, which would be the position of those transistors, probably, uh, it you'll fail. Again, I'm not really sure. These are BC547s, and they are both BC. They are both 547s. 4.7, and then 33, and then some little. 4148s. So it and what how big is this capacitor? It is a 16 volt, uh, 220 microfarads, so that's pretty good capacity. And that looks like it, even though I'm looking here. Oh, that's C1. Oh no, I'm sorry. I'm I'm a little confused here because we've got all these other components marked, then we've got two uh, plated connections that don't have a indication on what goes in them. Let's see if I can see what that looks like by R3. Let's 
I do not see that anything goes in there. But we'll find out. Okay, pretty straightforward. Let me get the soldering iron heated up and we'll put this thing together. First thing we're going to do is, as usual, is put all the resistors on the board. And we start off with uh, two 470 ohm resistors, and that would be these uh, yellow violet and one brown. Oops, my trash can moved. I gotta put my trash can back. Probably bang the camera tripod. Nope, I didn't. Good. And I dropped these back in here, so got lost. And they are at R1 and R7. Uh, I'm going to put one of these on right now and see how the board takes solder and see how far we have to bend the leads in. Now, the holes, component holes, are pretty far away, so you don't want to bend the component leads right up against the body like I did. You want to give a couple of millimeters on each side. Why are you all tangled up? Let's see. These are not through hole plated, so they're single sided. But took solder just fine. So we'll go ahead and do the rest of the resistors because there's not much more to say about them. Except again, we're going to bend the leads a couple of millimeters out from the body instead of right up against the body, and this is R7. To get them to go in well without fussing. So I'll do the rest of the resistors without commentary. So enjoy resistor time. And before I solder those down, I may as well put the three diodes on because they have the same layout characteristics as the resistors. And you'll see here there's a heavy white outline to match the black stripe on these 4148 diodes. So it's easy to get them correct or Maybe not easy, but less difficult. I don't know. I guess that is easy, isn't it? That's all the diodes and resistors. Now we'll put the capacitor in, and it goes here in C1. And as we can see, it's got a negative marker, not a positive marker, as many capacitor layout software does. And now we'll put the four LEDs on and the cathode side, the flat side, the short side is indicated by this long bar across the one side or one uh, apex of the circle or tangent of the circle. Now what I'm going to do here, because I want these LEDs to be flat on the board, I'm going to solder one leg of each, and I'm going to pick it up, and you can see they're not quite flat, they're not quite in a row, so I'm going to press on the top of it, of each one, heat up the, there, it clicked in, let it cool, and that clicked flat onto the board, let it cool. And that clicked flat on the board, let it cool, and ditto. Now they're all flat to the board and they're all lined up. And I keep saying let it cool because I have taken my iron, I've done this in the past, taken my iron off it a little too quickly, and of course it shifts out and I have to do it again. So you just have to be a little patient to let it cool down. Now we'll put the Transistors in. I can 
can find them. There's one. Where's that other one? Ah, there it is. It had hopped out of the parts bin. And as is an informal standard, the flat side marks the flat side on the transistor. Now this is just something I saw once people recommending you solder the middle leg of a transistor first keeps you from or makes it less likely that you'll bridge. Uh, I don't know how true that is but since I have no reason to think it's false or harmful I may as well do it in case it is true. Now we're going to put the battery snap on. I'm not going to trim that right yet. So we're going to come through here with the red wire. I'm going to do one wire at a time because whenever I try and do two wires at a time, things get ugly real fast. I'm going to get my little bendy pliers. You can use needle nose for this just to bend that around so it's easier for me to manipulate it while I am soldering it. Do the black lead. I'm going to trim these transistor leads off. And I'm going to snug the wire up through these holes so it's kind of neat, which is unusual for me. Now we're going to take the spindle wire and we're going to do the same thing. We're going to poke it through here. If the God, they've sure left a long lead on this. I think they made it, I think they made such a long lead so you could use it on either end. I'll trim that in a little bit. And now we're gonna, they don't actually show this step, which is interesting. They don't show you putting the stylus end on the end of the wire, but you of course need to do that. So we'll thread that through there. It'll poke out to the end, I hope. Well, you can barely see it in there. So what I'm going to do, put my locking pliers on there and stand it up. Oop. Stand it up like so. And I'm going to, don't be moving around. Don't it was moving around. And I'm going to get some solder down in there. Let it flow in. And I believe it flowed in pretty well. It's going to be hot for a moment. Now what I am going to do is I'm going to check continuity to that sleeve with my meter set in continuity mode. So I'm going to go to the lead there and here, and it should beep if I can get it down. It's not. There we go. So I've got continuity through the lead. And I'm not soldering anymore, so I turned the soldering iron off because I have been known to come down here in the morning and soldering iron's still on. It's sleeping at 330 degrees Fahrenheit, but it's still on. Now they say, they say to put this little black dingus in this hole. I don't know why. Maybe that's to... I gotta make sure this will go through. Maybe that's to rest this here, because again, it, that's in this step right here. Let's put the spindle there. I, I really don't know what that means. So what we're going to do is we're just going to plug it in with my rechargeable shop batteries and see what it does. See if we, oh, they do light up, so they are going through. So what do we do? That goes completely red. Uh, 
again, I'm not sure, uh, I hate to say it, but I'm not sure what's supposed to be happening here. Okay, uh, I'm going to turn the cameras off and take a look and see if there's any documentation on what exactly I'm supposed to be doing here. Okay, I figured it out. Uh, the And I had to go to Mad Lab's site. This is an old kit, so... Uh, but it makes what I saw makes sense. So you're alternating plays. You move a peg one to three positions along the path, and the person who makes it evenly to finish wins. Now, uh, so if I do it, I do. I'm going to move three. Move three. Now I'm going to ask the machine to pick its turn. And as you can see, there's no microcontroller here. So what we're doing is we're connecting this, and it is charging the capacitor. And in the time it's taking to charge that, the transistors are flip-flopping back and forth. And it came up with three, the third LED. So that means the machine wants to move three. Now I'm going to move two. Now we'll see what the machine wants to do this time wants to go three again. I have this, I have this funny feeling. So then we'll discharge that way. Let's see, it keeps doing three. Oh, there it goes. There's two. So I'm just not expecting randomness, because randomness means it might be three every single time for this path. I'm going to ignore that one. Again, it doesn't matter where I tap, tap this. because they're all taking the same signal path. Does does predominantly come up three, doesn't it? It's come up one once. Let's see what happens if we go over to the discharge side of the cap. Now on the if I go to the discharge side of the cap, I'm getting two. If I go to the other discharge point, I get one. Huh. Well I mean no, then I get all oh, then I get five. Uh, I'm sorry, six. If I could do arithmetic, it would be useful, wouldn't it? There's two. Is this going to give me five again, or is it going to give me something else? Well, we'll call it one, because one lit up first. So that's what it's doing. Again, it's charging this cap up, and the transistors are going to flip-flop various ways based on the timing of when you connect and when the cap discharges. So there, we've gotten all we've gotten all positions. We've got three, we've gotten two, and we've gotten one, as well as we've gotten every single thing. So there you go. It's a fun little kit, and uh, I guess it would be fun to play, but more importantly, uh, the schematic is good, and uh, uh, it's a quick and easy kit. This is a good first kit for somebody, even though it's not necessarily a real fun one when you get done. But it's instructional, and I will try and remember to put this link up on uh, in the description so you can follow, you can actually see the schematic. I wish uh, WADA had included the schematic, but they didn't. So that's it for this one, and I hope you enjoyed the video.